Hello everybody and welcome to a new Plan 2 video. With the conclusion of our last little series, which I covered um, the top animals on the Meta Wishlist for respective continents, I did m skip out on Antarctica, primarily because I had a grander idea for what Antarctica could have for the game, and that is a whole dedicated pack. So every other continent has, has received a dedicated pack. We had um, South America, we had Australia, Europe, North America, Africa, um, Southeast Asia, even though that's only a small part of the continent, it covered a majority of the uh, most wanted Asian animals. And we recently got the Oceania pack, which covers the continent of Oceania. But um, Antarctica was has been skipped out on so far, and we only have one animal from the region, that being the king penguin that was added in the aquatic pack. But I do have an idea and a solution to the lack of Antarctic animals, and that is an Antarctica pack. Now, given Antarctica is a completely wild um, continent, I had to spice it up a little bit. So we'll start with the animals. So the new animals that we will be getting are, that, that would be usable on a regular zoo basis would be all penguins. Because if I'm gonna be completely honest, most, if not all of Antarctica's captive animals are penguins. Leopard seals used to be kept at the Taronga Zoo in Sydney, Australia, but they were, had to both be euthanized due to malnourishment as the zoo was not able to um, feed them enough calories that they would get from nice juicy penguins. <laughs> um, but there, there, if there's one animal that represents Antarctica better than any other, it is a penguin. And this penguin in particular, the emperor penguin, um, is perhaps the most iconic animal from the continent. They are the largest species of penguin in the world, but surprisingly they are not on the meta wish list, given they are a legacy Zoo Tycoon animal. They were in Zoo Tycoon 1 and Zoo Tycoon 2, not Zoo Tycoon 3, but then again, there were no penguins in that game whatsoever. But Planet Zoo has got penguins, three species now with Oceana Pax little penguin, but um, Maybe one of the primary reasons the Emperor Penguin isn't really asked for by people is because we've already got the King Penguin. But I feel like the, the Emperor Penguin should be added due to its iconic status and is a perfect flagship for this pack. The next Penguin is one of the most common in captivity alongside the King Penguin and that is the Gentoo Penguin. They are considered the fastest penguin in Antarctic seas and do appear unique in comparison to the others with that um, white band going across their head and their orange beak. And would also be a fine addition to create mixed penguin habitats as we, we kind of lack that as we have one Antarctic penguin and the other two being temperate penguins, the African penguin and the little penguin. But um, you can't really mix those guys. But with this pack, you would be able to create a completely mixed um, penguin exhibit. Um, the next species is the chinstrap penguin, named for that black band that goes under the beak. And yeah, this species is widespread in captivity as well, um, kept in a variety of marine centres and some zoos. Um, I believe Central Park Zoo in New York City um, has chinstrap penguins. And I think SeaWorld San Diego has also got chinstrap penguins in their Antarctica expedition exhibit, I think it's called. But um, yeah, this species um, would work well with the King Penguin and the Gentoo Penguin, as well as the Emperor Penguin. Lots of penguins to get through, but um, I'm not including all penguins, just primarily finishing off the ones that are found on Antarctica and around. So the next species is the Macaroni Penguin, named for the um, yellow feathers above its head that resemble that of a feather on it. And a, um, it was a, it's some kind of, what kind of hat was it um i think it was but it, it was used by the spanish people um i'm pretty sure and maybe by the english as well i i honestly don't know human history as well as i know animal history but um macaroni penguin is also found widespread in captivity and would be a great species to have alongside the kings and gentoos and our last penguin consideration is the Adelie penguin, often considered one of the most aggressive of the penguin species, um, with its unique 
black head and um, white white ring around the eye. I believe that's I believe that's a ring, not part of the actual eye. But um, yeah, it's one of the last penguins I I considered, and I wasn't going to include the rock hopper in this selection as that that penguin could be great for a coastal animal pack, which I will be covering in a future video. But um, yeah, so that's all the penguins. But this pack comes with a lot more animals than just these five penguins. An idea I had for this pack was to include wild animals. So animals that are around the map just doing their own thing. So particularly with the two different maps that we'll get to a bit later. So the species I considered are the wandering albatross, the brown scuba, the southern elephant seal, the Weddell seal, Antarctic fur seal, orca, humpback whale, and the infamous leopard seal. Um, all of which would be able to be rescues in the new campaign scenario that I have in mind. And yeah, just a, a good excuse to get some of these animals that you wouldn't see in a zoo um, into Planet Zoo. Just so we've got a cool new unique kind of career scenario. Um, a few other wild animals to be considered are the northern and southern giant petrels, as well as the southern right whale, the Antarctic minke whale, the fin whale, and the biggest animal on Earth, the Antarctic blue whale, all of which would be fantastic to see swimming in the Antarctic seas um, on our little career scenario, or, and would also be able to be documented and observed within the game because the main focus of the career scenario is animal research re rehabilitation and conservation of the antarctic wildlife so some of the new scenery we can we would expect from this pack um, would be like placeable icebergs and ice flows um, just to be creating a, a convincing antarctic landscape would be also be interactable by um, the penguins and seals um, got some research station sort of scenery so some of these rounded edges and bizarre eight otherworldly looking buildings um the one new plant i thought of was antarctic hair grass i think that would work well as well as a variety of lichens and mosses from south georgia and other sub-antarctic islands speaking of south georgia um, a bit of scenery from the abandoned whaling station of grit Viken would be um, a interesting addition to this scenery set. Just to um, hint at um, South Georgia's dark past, where Grit Viken was a central whaling hub, where all the whales would, that were caught would be brought in and processed to be turned into soaps and oils. Yeah, it's, it's sad stuff. Luckily, that is several years in the past, though whaling does still, does still occur in some countries. But just having like abandoned ships and other um, sort of ghastly um, scenery to represent humanity's darker past. But that was just an idea. Um, so new campaign scenario. Yes. So basically you would be heading with Bernie Goodwin and Emma Goodwin to Antarctica on a research vessel um, named like the the... Goodwin Marina or something, um, whatever Frontier would decide to call it, and you are you would be heading to two primary stations, that being the Antarctic Peninsula, um, which is the closest point to South America, as well as the island of South Georgia to do a bit of con conservation work with the animals that live there. So um, you'd be heading to Antarctica's Antarctica's seas to study and observe the marine life, so penguins, the seals, the whales, all that. Um, and also, if there are any injured animals, you'd be taking them into care and nursing them back to health and then releasing them back into the wild from your zoo. I think that would be an interesting idea rather than them just being, <laughs> them just phasing out of existence uh, that we currently have. But I think it's an interesting idea for, for this pack. I haven't really thought of too much of the details. I would kind of leave that up to Frontier's imagination, as many of the career scenarios are pretty good right now. And it would be interesting to see what they would do in these circumstances. Also, jets, uh, uh, not, not jet skis, 
snow snowmobiles. That would be another scenery piece and would come into one of the update features I have in mind. So the new maps would include a map for the Antarctic Peninsula where you would have a selection of land that you would build on um, with your research equipment and buildings overlooking the Antarctic seas, which would be brimming with Antarctic life. On the coastlines, you'd see penguins and seals, and in the ocean, you would find multiple whales. So that's just my idea for how this sort of wild animal situation would work. You have a certain, you have a large map, very large map to work with, and multiple wild animals living in that area. So that's just sort of my idea. And the South Georgia map is probably my favorite one because you'd be building um, down at one of the bays and at the back of the back of the map you can see all the hills the wandering albatross breeding site so you'd see chicks sitting on the nest and the occasional adult flying in um, giving its chicks some food and then flying back off and if it's breeding season you would see the albatross do their mating display and their incredible calls I think that would just be a cool um, little thing to have just you you're working on your research facility down on the coast of South Georgia and you can look look at the back of the map and you can see the wandering albatross just doing their thing and down on the beach you could see the southern elephant seals antarctic fur seals the skewers um, and petrels and potentially using AI um, like king penguins from the aquatic pack you wouldn't really be able to interact with them unless they were injured so they, you wouldn't be keeping them necessarily if you didn't get the aquatic pack. Although I'm sure a lot of you have the aquatic pack due to its overall value. But that's just my idea for a few maps. On to a few update features which I find quite exciting. Mostly folk revolving around backstage and staff improvements. So one of the major improvements would be giving staff available vehicles. This would allow staff to better... Um, move around large zoos. So say if you're building a safari park, um, staff will have to run and run all the way to an exhibit that could be on the far side of the zoo. But to make it more accessible, giving staff vehicles to get around and following specific trackways, that could be a good system to let the staff know where they're driving and keep going at it. So that that's where the jet skis come in. Uh, jet skis. <laughs> I mean, jet skis would be interesting, but um, the snowmobiles, I, I always call them jet skis, and I have no idea why. The snowmobiles in the Antarctica campaign, they would be used to survey the site and observe the animals from a distance. It would be cool if you could do a first-person mode version of that. You take a jet ski and go out to observe the animals yourself. I think that would be a cool idea. Um, a few of the backstage improvements would be a whole backstage um, set. So working backstage gates and, and fences, they allow animals to climb around and interact with them. So overhead chutes as well, that would be an interesting idea, whether they'd be circular or um, square. Either way, they would be great for having animals moving between the backstage cages. And that's just for small animals. With hoofstock, you would have backstage um, fences and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, just all this sort of stuff to give your zoos a bit more depth in the way that animals are cared for and how they're housed. I think it's just an interesting idea to improve the shelters and just how the animals are being kept at your zoos. One of the, one of the last features I've got in mind, at least on this slide, um, is animal and staff interaction. So this is something that people have wanted for a long time and that's keepers, vets, and I think that would be all that would be qualified to interact with the animals and educators, I guess, too, um, to actually work with the animals, go into the enclosures, do training exercises, all that sort of stuff. So with cats, like in this um, little image here, you got a few cheetah cubs and the keeper has come in to check on them and teach them a few things. So that sort of thing. And with educators, you could do proper shows where you bring um, animal ambassadors out to show the guests um, what these animals are like in the wild and show them what makes them so special. That sort of thing would be incredible to have in the game and they're sort of like transported and will come out every now and then. 
It'd be great for like reptile shows and all sorts of other presentations. I think that would just be a fun idea. But um, moving on to the next slide, um, just two more ideas, all revolving around gates. So one is chain link habitat gates, because right now we've got a metal gate, a glass gate, and a wooden gate. But I feel like a, a see-through chain link gate would be a, an interesting addition to sort of merge with the mesh fence and the chain link fence. Just giving a bit more um, synergy <laughs> in the fences, having it feel thematic. And for different habitat guest entrance gates. So we've just got this big wooden one right now. But what about um, working gates like the sliding glass doors or an airlock system? Those sort of things. Just allowing guests to enter your habitat in slightly different ways rather than just a big wooden gate. I feel like that would be just a good thing to have. But yeah, that is my idea for the Antarctica pack and the um, update that would come out alongside it. Let me know what you think of this DLC. Would you buy it? And do you think it's possible for it to actually happen? I mean, the game's come a long way. We're going on the fourth year of support, almost done, and we're going to get a fifth. And I feel like Antarctica is dying for a bit of representation. And this pack feels like a very uh, fleshed out and valuable DLC to make for the game, just to give Antarctica a bit more relevance in Planet 2. But yeah, leave your comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video talking about a different DLC idea. Bye-bye.